Sponsors. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. You are with Joshua Salam, the host of Think About It. And that was like, that was my LeBron imitation. He said, pop, 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 pop. Go Cavs. Just kidding. Hey, but hey, check it out. You've come to another episode of Think About It where we are talking about stuff in the Quran, stuff during the month of Ramadan, and life in general that we can reflect on, ponder, and really engage the community. So I, I hope you come back to watch this show. It's going to be a good show. Please visit us and Penny Appeal. USA.org. That's our sponsor. We'll be right back with Think About It. Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. Once again, you are coming to see. Think about it with Joshua Salam. I'm your host, and our sponsor is Penny Appeal, pennyappealusa.org. Give one penny or a billion pennies. As long as you're helping the needy in the world, do what you can. Uh, you know, if you've been watching previous episodes of Think About It, we've had some guests on about the Quran, either learning the Quran through a program called Fawake or memorizing the Quran. We brought Brother Keba on, who really talked about uh, his journey to memorize the Quran, and he's almost there. Make dua for him that he finishes it by the end of the year. That's what his intentions is, or that's what his intentions are, so hopefully he gets it. Uh, and I have another guest today who has memorized the Quran and who's going to talk to you more about another aspect of it, so we'll bring him on soon. But first, I just wanted to talk to you guys, since it's just you and me, let's talk a little bit about the Quran in general. You know, uh, the, the concept of the Qur'an I find very amazing. I, I don't know, like for me I didn't really think of it, think of it, like the way I'm about to explain it to you, until I was in my uh, 20s or 30s. That the Qur'an, there's, there's, a, there's a bigger book, an amazing book, that's called the Lauh al -Mafuv. It's like everything is in this tablet. I think it's actually translated a lot of times in the Qur'an as the amazing tablet or something like that, right? Everything is in it. And, and uh, from that book came the Qur'an. It was, uh, so that book, consider that like in the highest heaven. And then in one night, one night. Now, now, remember, this is from my understanding. If you guys know better or if you heard something different, you got to put it in the chat or you got to email us at info at dean.tv and, and tell me otherwise. But I'm telling you what I know, what I've learned. In one night. The Qur'an came from that, that highest heaven and was brought down to the lowest heaven, right? And that night that that happened in was Laylatul Qadr, right? So that, the reason why I had to ask that question is because the surah that I was engaging of uh, Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr wa ma adraka ma Laylatul Qadr Well, what, you know, indeed the, the, uh, we revealed it in the, the Laylatul Qadr in one night. And so I was like, wait a minute, what do you mean you revealed it in one night? But the Quran came over a period of 23 years, right? So how did it come in one night? And I started like thinking about this and asking, and then this is when this explanation was given to me, that yes, it was, uh, it did come down, it did get revealed and, and, and put down in one night from the highest heaven to the lowest heaven. And then from there, there was a period of 23 years where Angel Jibreel was taking these verses and revealing it to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then and even that was uh, a call and response, right? It wasn't just like tablets that were dropped down. And then one day the prophet was walking and he tripped over and he said, what's this? Oh, it's the Quran. No, it's like uh, the Quran's coming because somebody from a tribe, maybe a Jewish tribe, asked him a question. And then the Quran says, they ask you about Dhul Qurnayn or something like that and tell them this. And then um, maybe there's another story where um, a lady comes to the, to the prophet and asks him something and says, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really hear a lot of the Qur'an talking to me as a woman. And then Allah reveals something. And so even though it had already been pre-written, right, it's already been there, and it came down uh, to the lower heaven, and then from there over 23 years it came to the prophet, it was already uh, known. This, this kind of just reveals the ultimate wisdom, the ultimate power, the ultimate knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he, there's no like past and, and present and future with Allah. It's just, it's 
he created time itself. So he knows what's happened in the past, he knows what's going to happen in the future, and he can reveal a book that takes all of that into the place. He knew that the, this tribe was going to ask the prophet something. This verse would be revealed at that point in time. It's just uh, amazing. It's one of the things that kind of, <laughs> that's why I do that on the show. You just think about it. Think about the Quran and how it has come down. And this book is the most memorized book on earth. There's no other book that people are just grinding it out day in, day out, all day long, seven hours a day, trying to memorize a book other than the Quran. People might try to memorize a poem. They might try to memorize like um, uh, a speech, a, a speech of Dr. Martin Luther King or a famous speech of some president. But I don't know of anybody trying to memorize an entire book. And it's not just memorizing the words, right? There's, it's memorizing the melody. It's memorizing the, the, the tones. It's memorizing the, the length of time that you're in saying this note with that note. You are doing all of that with this book, right? And so this is the most memorized book in the world. And now, the other thing that I think you need to, to know is that in the Quran, they have different levels of memorization. And once you memorize this book, you are considered a protector. You have memorized the book. You have protected the book. Brother Keba mentioned it a little bit when he was here. That, um, but he said preserve, like you're preserving a book, right? But no, this is, I like the, the term like protecting. You have the Quran protected. It doesn't matter what anybody does in the world. They could take all the Qur'ans, get, gather them and throw them in a the sea, and they could burn them and they could bury them. It doesn't matter because we have people out there who have protected the book, the Hufaz. They have protected this book, and no matter what happens, the Qur'an is still there. It still exists. One of the stories that I like to, to use to show this is, uh, in, my, in my tradition, uh, knowing that a lot of the uh, African people were taken from Africa and brought here and forced into slavery, um, a lot of the people that they took were Muslim. Uh, a lot of reports today say about 20 to 30 percent of the Africans that were taken from their land and brought here and forced into slavery were, uh, were Muslim. And some of them were amazing scholars. Some of them were amazing statesmen and princes and, and, and princesses and you know, queens, and a lot of people were taken. It wasn't just uh, one particular demographic or, or, or uh, economic base or something like that. So many people were taken. Now, in, in Africa, in certain areas, you weren't considered uh, a person who had memorized the Quran just by memorizing the Quran. You had to memorize it, and you had to write your own Quran, right? So once you had done both, once you had memorized the book, and then on your own, that you had written it, and then you would carry it with you, like this is my Quran, I wrote it from memory myself. Then with those two, you were considered a hafiz. You were considered someone who had memorized the Quran. So it was like a, a next level. So some of the, the Africans that were brought from Africa and brought here into slavery rewrote the Quran from memory. They had already done it before. And it was one of the first things that they did, you know, being taken from their land in a new place. They don't know anything, they don't know the language, but they were able to make another Qur'an from memory. That is just absolutely amazing. You can check it up, you can Google it, or you can, I don't know, Bing it. Is that a, do people say that? You can Bing it, Google it, but it's there. It's in, it's in our tradition. And so this Qur'an is, inshallah, may Allah protect it, may Allah preserve it, He has promised to do so, that it's always going to be with us. So the only missing link now is what we do with it, right? So the Qur'an is there, it's not going anywhere, it's going to be protected, it's being protected by people like my next guest, people like Keba, who, who was here before, who have dedicated their, their time, their lives, their efforts, their resources to protecting this book. So now what? Now there's an, of another stage of understanding it. The, the, to me there's three stages, there's, you know, you protect it, you engage it and understand it, and then you act on it, right? So right now I'm going to talk about the uh, engagement and the understanding. Uh, Keba mentioned to you his journey to uh, understand the Qur'an. So one, one is memorizing it, but now he wants to understand it, right? He wants to, um, when he recites, he wants to hear those words and know that he's talking about the story of Ibrahim or what Allah is saying about his Jannah or his paradise or warning about the hellfire. He wants to really understand that. And I, and I would tell you, that in my experience, this is a section in the process that is 
affecting the next phase. Because we are not understanding, one, our prayer, two, the Qur'an, it is affecting our practice, which is the next phase. We have the Qur'an. It's been preserved by uh, hundreds of years of scholarship and people who have been memorizing this book and preserving it and, and, and writing it and have, coming up with a, uh, a system to make sure that uh, when they write another Qur'an that it's exactly like the one before. There's a whole system, a whole science to that. Alhamdulillah, boom, the Qur'an is there. Now we have to try to engage it and understand it, right? So yes, people are translating it. I am a person who has to read the translation. I'm in the Arabic program. You guys heard before, you know, I'm in a super slow process getting stuck uh, with other lives, but I, I refuse to give up. I refuse to give up. I'm, I'm going to stay on that journey until more of the Quran starts opening up to me. But I, I noticed this with the prayer. Again, this was, I forget when I came to this realization, but I was like, man, so many Muslims do not know what they're saying in their prayer. So when they say, Sami Allahu liman hamida, Rabbana wa lak alhamd, when they say, Subhana Rabbil ala, when they say the tashahud, when they're saying all these things, they've memorized it, but the, the meaning of it, the praise of Allah, the, the giving greetings to, to the Prophet Muhammad, the, the, uh, uh, the, the asking Allah to, to, hear, to hear, you know, what you're saying, asking Allah for guidance, all of these things are kind of being lost. And I think sometimes the prayer doesn't have the effect that we were hoping it would have, that we've read that it has with previous generations because of that gap in, in understanding. So I want to ask myself and ask you, put in some time to first understand the prayer that we say, the five daily prayers. Put in some time to making sure that you know those words from the, from the first takbir to the taslim at the end, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, and all that in between, understand as much as you can so that when you're praying to Allah, you really get these words. I have found that it has had a, a big impact on my prayers. And inshallah, I think it, it may have on yours also. And then to understanding the Quran, right? To understanding what Surah Al-Fatiha is. So that will be a joint thing. To understand your prayer, you got to understand Surah Al-Fatiha. And then that's also a chapter of the Qur'an, but also any of the, the chapters that you've already memorized. For a lot of us, you know, it's in the last 30th, the last Jews, Jews Amma. If you've uh, memorized any of those surahs, start taking it word by word, just like Kevin was saying. Word by word, what does this word mean? And start using it. Maybe post it up on your refrigerator. What does this word mean? Start using it. Post it, you know, in, in, in your um, office or your bedroom or something like that so you see these words more often so that we can begin to really... Uh, uh, not depend on other people to translate the Qur'an. Because I'm going to tell you, there's going to be a brother I'm going to bring in um, uh, tomorrow, Imam Majid. Imam Majid has told me many a times how frustrated he is with different translations of the Qur'an. So as a, he's from Sudan, as an Arabic-speaking person, he goes and he goes, we're in a class and he's translating the word, and then the students say, well, that's not, that's not what it says here in my book. In, in this Qur'an it says they translated it as this. And Imam Majid goes like this, ah, oh, you know, yeah, <laughs> you might see him do this uh, tomorrow, so look for that. Maybe I'll get him to, to do this move. You know, it's frustrating, it's like, that's a bad translation. This, uh, it really means this and, and more of this. And then it takes a conversation to really explain what this means. And it happens all the times between language. I don't care if it's between Spanish and English. Words don't translate exactly all the time. Sometimes it requires more of a conversation, uh, to get across you what this word is really, really saying, right? So this is some of the stuff that we're talking about today, and I hope that, if nothing else, it inspires you to really engage the Qur'an. Uh, uh, if you're going to be one of those protectors, if you're going to be one of those people to dedicate your life and your resources to the memorization of it and be a protector, uh, if you're going to be one of the people who uh, really engages it to understand it fully, and then finally, the last thing that I want to talk about is all of us who need to act on it, right? To act on the Qur'an. Is the Qur'an uh, uh, penetrating our hearts? Is it penetrating our uh, mind? Is it really uh, becoming our book of guidance? Because, you know, we're, we are a creature that's been created with the ability to choose. We choose. Allah has given us the ability to choose. If we're going to use this book, or we're going to leave it. If I'm going to go to the Qur'an to find out how I should be living my life, what Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me doing right now, or if I don't really care. 
we choose, right? And so we really want to get to that last phase where we're acting on the Qur'an. So when you open it up, and hopefully this is the month that we're uh, opening up the Qur'an more and uh, engaging it more and thinking about it more so that when we leave Ramadan, we keep that habit. But as you're opening it up, uh, when you're reading these verses, let's think about, hmm, how can I implement that? How can I, Allah says that I, you know, I should be uh, concerned about showing off. I don't want to be a person that's just trying to be religious to show off. Allah is saying that uh, I need to be thinking about uh, my brothers and sisters and, and, and doing what I can to spend in his way. And don't worry about it. He's going he's gonna to take care of me, whether it's my time or my money or anything. If I'm doing it for Allah, Allah is going to reward me. I mean, let me try to really own that and believe it. Right? So these are some of the things that we're going to talk about. I have an amazing guest that's going to help me through it. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to take a break with our sponsors, PennyAppealUSA.org. I'm your host, Joshua Salam, for the show that is called Think About It. Do not go anywhere. Stay in your seats. You don't want to, you don't want to miss it. Salam alaikum. Penny Appeal USA is really just an idea that manifested itself into an organization. We wanted to spearhead the next generation of humanitarian organizations to focus on true sustainability, transparency, and innovation. And though we're only a year old, we think we're well on our way to accomplishing that. People told us that what we were doing would never work. Put computers in low-income school districts? No one's going to support that. Develop an app that places social services at the fingertips of refugees, undocumented immigrants, and working-class families? You guys are crazy. And perhaps we were, but at each point, we knew that our supporters, folks like you, would be there. Whether you've supported us in the past or not, we hope you'll join us on our mission to end cyclical poverty, one sustainable program at a time. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. You are with Joshua Slam and the show, Think About It. And our host, we want to thank PennyAppealUSA.org for bringing the show to you. I don't even want to cut into the time of my next guest. It is Brother Burhan. Assalamu alaikum. How you doing, man? Now, how, how do you pronounce your full name? Like, don't, don't miss any words, your full name. So, you're, good thing you asked about My real name is not Burhan. Really? No, it's not. Oh. My real name is Shamash Hood. Oh. Now, here's where it gets tricky. Burhan is easier? No, no, no. So, at home... When I was born, I had, you know, Shah Mashud was my real name. And then my grandfather, may Allah be pleased with him, told me, he's like, I want him to be called Burhan Ahmad. Uh, so that's my name. Uh -huh. So when I moved to Adam's area, Sheikh Samuel was my teacher. So I told him, you know, my name is Burhan Ahmad. He's like, you know, we'll stick to Burhan. Uh -huh. So it stuck to Burhan and every single time in Adam's everywhere, I'm known as Burhan. When they hear my real name, they're shocked like, Who's this Shama Shuda? Who's this guy? Like, and I just kind of stand up and like, okay, yeah, that's me. So yeah, Burhan is not my real name, but you know, I, it's an Adams thing now. And just anywhere I go, I'm known as Burhan. So really, I just, really. So you just let it stay. Yeah. So it's Shama Shuda, but I, I go by Burhan. Did, did you give our producers the, the real name? Or, I put Burhan. Or, you did? Because <laughs> there is going to be like, okay, his name is, but now re recently people realize that, okay, that's not his real name. So, but still, I just like, I don't want to change it now. So it's Burhan. Okay, so the, the real name is Shah? Shah Mashhud. Sham or Shah? Shah. Shah Mashhud. Mashhud, yeah. Shah Mashhud. Right. Uh, yeah, whole family. Uh, my, I have four brothers. Uh -huh. We're all named Shah. My father's name is Shah. So my father is Shah Mahmud. Uh -huh. My oldest brother Shah Dawood. Uh -huh. Then Shah Maqsud. Shah Masood. Shah Mashhud. <laughs> so growing up, it. so growing it. up when we were in school, it was always like, okay, when they called, they would just say by Shah. Right. Can I speak to Shah? So when my mom or somebody picked up the phone, like, which one? But they would know, Shah 1, 2, 3, or 4. Uh -huh. Oldest is 1, I'm uh -huh. 4. So it's kind of like, that's how we know. That is amazing. Yeah. That's so, amazing. I mean, nobody really knows that, but yeah. So Burhan. But I can call you Burhan. You can call me Burhan. Okay. But now the world knows the real name. <laughs> and try to get it right if you ever meet him. Don't call him Shah 4. <laughs> call him Shah Mashhud. Mashhud, yes. Mashhud. When did you start memorizing the Quran? So, I started memorizing at a younger age. But it was kind of like, you know, for me it was like, you know, you had school. You didn't want to take time off and do homeschooling, stuff like mm -hmm. that. So I was mm -hmm. like... The older I got, when I finished high school, I was like, okay, you know, this is a good time for me to stop and, you know, um, take time away from college or something mm -hmm. and memorize. Mm -hmm. So that's when I really, but I had it from, you know, at a young age that, you know, I wanted to memorize and be, 
connected and you know at the end you know my goal was also to teach the Quran that was I mean something. was that something in your in your family line like no was, you have no, an uncle no. I mean, or a grandfather that had memorized it or no something? to be honest for me like family brothers uncles I'm the first one uh, to memorize the Quran alhamdulillah alhamdulillah yeah. and then you have younger cousins and everything like that right, but right. you know oh, like but you kind of started it yeah in yeah your family. and well the thing is here in you know in America okay. I have family back home you know mm -hmm. again most people are memorizing the Quran but in America I'm I would say the first one to start wow, it here, and wow. then you know, now I have nephews and nieces, and you know everybody else. Inshallah. Wow. Continuing mashallah. That way. Allah give you the 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 barakah for all I mean, of that. You know, spreading is like a, a a seed that just keeps growing and growing, and growing because of because of your actions. Alhamdulillah. I mean, so yeah. So I you know I had that with me the whole time, but then after high school, I was like you know I gotta. Now it's kind of now or never. You know, mm -hmm. when you, the older you get, you have more responsibilities and everything mm -hmm. like that, and um, so I was like, okay, after high school, and you know. Knowing, I know it's not going to be easy. You mm -hmm. know, the older you get, I, my goal, if I wanted to at a younger age, you know, that's when the mind is fresh and you mm -hmm. can memorize. Mm -hmm. But you know, at, at the end, I tell people, you know, it's never, you know, it's never too late. Never think that, you know, I'm old, I can't do it. Uh, there's an Arabic saying that said, you know, a thousand miles begins with one step. Mm -hmm. You take that mm -hmm. first step, and you know, just put your trust in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So, uh, now, now you said. You knew it wasn't going to be easy, yeah, right. So, what was your expectation going in? How long did you expect it would take to memorize the Quran? When you get older, I would think it was going to take about like four or five years to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it took me about three and a half years. Alhamdulillah. Three and a half years. Yeah. You you thought it was going to take you four to five. Yeah. And it took you three and a half. Well, yeah, because what, what uh, again, at first I wasn't thinking about doing it. Well, if I thought about doing it full time, like full full time. Because uh -huh. I was doing it at Adams from like 7.30 to 3.30. Right. Um, then it, it took about three and a half years. But, you know, I, I, you always want to plan ahead and, you know, just give yourself some that buffer space. Because uh -huh. there will be days, you know, and I'm telling people that memorizing. There's going to be days that it's going to be easy. There's going to be days that you're not going to memorize something. And you're going to have your up and down, uh, ups and downs. And, you know, that's why you want to have that buffer zone. Don't always think that, you know, I got to do it in two years and halas, that's it. But, you know, give yourself some extra time. You know, add on fact onto the fact that you know there might be days you get sick, there might be days that uh, you travel, you go places, and it gets tough. Mm -hmm. So you always want to plan. Uh, you know, give yourself some extra time and mm -hmm. give that buffer area. So <coughs> Keba came on this very stage, yeah. sat, sat in his very chair, yeah, yeah. and said that he he plans on memorizing six jewels between now and it's like late May, yeah, yeah. Uh, before December. And I was like, wow, six jewels. He goes, oh man, there's 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 young Quran students that to them that's not anything. Yeah. As a Quran teacher, yeah, where where does that range? Is somebody trying to memorize six jewels in half a year? So it, it all depends on how much they memorize a day. You mm -hmm. know, you want to base it off if they memorize a page a day. And again, when you first start, you're probably going to be doing two lines, three lines, four lines. Mm -hmm. By the end of the you know the first couple of months, you should get to at least seven, eight, nine lines. Mm -hmm. You know, if you know, again, there's people, mashallah, they're gifted. I know people that are doing a page, page and a half, two pages. Really? Yeah, a day. A day. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, now again, it's not. Qual it's the quality over the quantity that matters. But mm -hmm. there are people, mashallah, that two pages for them easily they can memorize in mm -hmm. about, let's say, an hour and a half, two hours mm -hmm. uh, if they're in a full time program. So, again, looking at it, if you're talking about a student who's in a full time program, mm -hmm. six and a half Jews, you know, for the first year, so it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a reasonable pace, you wow. know, especially wow. for the first year. Wow. You know, you have people that are probably doing uh, seven lines a day, they mm -hmm. can get about six Jews a year. Wow. So, uh, you know, again, if you do a page a day and you do it, let's say, every day, that's that's 30 pages you do about a juice and a half a month. You see, you see how Burhan calculates Quran. Uh, you know, I've seen people calculate uh, finances like that. Oh yeah, you know, if I buy it, get 10% off, it should cost me about seven. This guy, he's, he's calculating Quran, yeah, page, page and a half, so it should take you about uh, six years. MashaAllah, that, that's somebody who's <laughs> no, been it, in it for a while. No, alhamdulillah, <laughs> it, it just, it's natural. Again, like everybody's, you know, have their job, right. you have, you know, account and stuff like that. For me, it's, it's a daily thing now, right. for, and then you just kind of calculate the numbers quickly, right, right. plug it in. Now, do you see, because when I, you know, sometimes in the message I see, um, uh, uh, and producers, you know, you got to let me know, you know, where I'm at on time, you know, because I could talk all day with this guy, <laughs> you know, because I don't know how much time I have left. But um, you, when you, uh, when I'm in the message, yeah. and, you know, you, you see all the little children uh, memorizing Quran, and then uh, they're just reviewing, yeah. right? So they're not like, doing the, I guess, the, the test with their teacher where they're really reciting. Yeah. They're just reviewing like one of, they have another student in front of them and they're yeah, reviewing. Yeah. They can, they can recite so fast. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, well, I didn't say it right. Go back to this ayah. Yeah, yeah. How, do, um, uh, how does the ear get like a different level of 
understanding of super speed that because they can't recite slow all the time yeah, yeah. In, their, in their practice otherwise it'll take them eight to yeah, ten yeah. years maybe but how how do they how are they able to do that just like hear all the mistakes and all that even though they're going well i mean it just probably because they've memorized it so mm -hmm. it's not like they're really focusing here it's kind of up here for example i might be reading it but i'm a little i'm, I'm faster ahead here mm -hmm. you know for somebody reading something and knowing it from memory mm -hmm. even though they're probably reading it you're already looking a couple of words ahead. Mm -hmm. So you're already mm -hmm. catching those mistakes right away. Mm -hmm. Like for example, mm -hmm. somebody's reading and then they make a mistake. Even though they're reading fast, you can say that they made this mistake and you catch it right away. I see. So it, knowing it, rather than for example, somebody who doesn't know it and they're mm -hmm. reading it, is gonna take them longer. Mm -hmm. to, and you know, for somebody to read fast, they might not keep up with them. Right. But someone right. who knows it and then also listening to it, right. it makes it easier they for them to it. do it. I see. Yeah. Huh. So <clears throat> you mentioned earlier about uh, when you start young, you know, your brain is more fresh or yeah. something like that. Do you find that uh, in general, of yeah. course, there's always exceptions to the rule. Like you said, there's some students that are just gifted. Yeah, yeah. But in general, when, when children get started earlier, that they memorize much more and easier than the students that come in uh, starting later at a later age? So what I've seen with some students is that, you know, Again, it's always good to start at a young age. When mm -hmm. I mean young, like, you know, starting reading Quran and everything like that. Mm -hmm. What I've seen that if you give people, let's say, at a full-time pace, starting at a young age, you know, it, it's going to be tough for them. Let's say mm -hmm. five years old, when some people, that's ideally four or five, that's the year they, they want to put them in a, a school, mm -hmm. which is fine. But you got to also think that, you know, they're kids. Mm -hmm. Four or five hours for a five-year-old, it's going right. to be a lot. Right. So the real kind of age where they can be able to sit throughout the whole time I would say eight, nine, ten, that age, they can sit and mm -hmm. memorize. You know, again, there might be five, six-year-olds that can memorize faster, but it's it's not the norm. It's mm -hmm. not something average. Mm -hmm. What I've seen, like nine, ten-year-olds, they can probably easily memorize five, six lines mm -hmm. a day. Mm -hmm. um, and so, again, it all depends on the age, but it's always, you know, recommended you should start getting them attached to the Qur'an at a younger age. Mm -hmm. And, you know, four or five, have them pray next to you, have them, you know, uh, recite the Qur'an, have it playing in the CD or something like that. Mm -hmm. So they get attached to it. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you're really interested in putting them, that eight, nine years old, because now they should also know the, the responsibilities of the Qur'an. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're mm -hmm. at a four or five year old, it's kind of, you don't really know the responsibility. Mm -hmm. You're just memorizing, memorizing, memorizing. Mm -hmm. But when you get nine, ten, you really, you can realize, okay, this is what you have to do, this is right, this is wrong. You can realize mm -hmm. that. So that's mm -hmm. a good age. And I've seen that, you know, that nine, ten year olds, when they start, they're usually done by 12, 13, 14, wow. they're done. Wow. Yeah. Mashallah. Now, you, you mentioned that uh, uh, Sheikh Samir Allah yeah. was your teacher. And yeah, yeah. For those who don't know, he's a very famous Quran teacher in the Northern Virginia area. And then you branched off and you started your own school. So, I've known Sheikh Samir Allah since 2003. Okay. He, the way I found him was that he did my uncle's nikah. Okay. And that was okay. the first time I met him. Uh -huh. And then about a week, two later, I was going to a school and he comes and I'm like, oh, I remember him. He was, so then from then on till now, you know, I've, you know, he's been my teacher, alhamdulillah. And I've had other teachers, uh, you uh -huh. know, also, um, Sheikh Hatim, Sheikh Abdul Basit, uh, Im Imam Zia. Uh -huh. He was oh, actually okay. one of my first teachers. Oh, really? When I was young, young, uh, in Mustafa Center. Okay. Yeah. So I had, alhamdulillah, I've had a lot of teachers and, you know, I'm still trying to be in touch with most of them. But yeah, so. With him, I actually started the Quran, memorized it. Um, I was with him at Adams, and then mm -hmm. he actually opened up his place. Mm -hmm. And so he was while he was at Adams, I was memorizing there and you know also teaching there. Mm -hmm. I, I remember you there, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, were, you were the man, and then you don't even know, but he's a Quran student that can switch the threes better than Steph Curry. I was Curry. actually going to remember this. Remember the time I used to play in the gym? I used to play barefoot. Yes. He would always tell me not to play barefoot, and I was like, I can't. I don't play in shoes. I play barefoot. <laughs> And it was you, Sajad, and all those guys. Like, you can't play on this guy. I was like, and then when they see me shoot or something, I, I mean, I'm not all good. All right, all right, you can play. I'm, you not, can I'm, play. Not, I'm not good. I'm not good. But they would see, like, oh. And then I would always wear, a th uh, like, shalwar kameez or thobe. And, right. you know, growing up, that's always. And then even when I was young in my school, my neighborhood, we would always play barefoot. Right, So right. they're like. <laughs> and then, you know, when we shoot around. And we like, over okay. here with these Nikes. And, all <laughs> and he's still shooting us out of the gym. No, 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 no. I haven't been up with that. But, yeah, so it's, I've been at Adams. Alhamdulillah, I started here. And then I actually finished uh, with Sheikh Samila at mm -hmm. his school. And then after that, you know, there's that time that, okay, you finish now, now what kind of mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. So then you're like, okay, um, you, just, you need to start memorizing it. You memorized it. Now you got to understand it. Mm -hmm. And that was something that, again, for me, was big. Mm -hmm. um, aside uh, also with the part that, you know, you have to read with the Jweet, mm -hmm. and that's where Sheikh Hatim played a, mm -hmm. a role. You know, Alhamdulillah, I was with him. Uh, I got an ijazah through him. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Alhamdulillah, Mashallah. with him. 
So he was my teacher for that. And, you know, for me, that's very important. Tajweed, reading with Tajweed is very important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then after that, I started teaching with Sheikh Samuel. But then I was like, okay, now what? You know, you finish this, you got to understand it. So then, mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, again, you have time to take time off. So then I, I, I went to Baina for one year. I went okay. to Texas uh -huh. for about 10 months. And it was... Uh, I, re I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to Baina for 10 months. Help with your comprehension. For comprehension, uh -huh. understanding. And uh, I worked on uh, grammar there too and also uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. It wasn't part of the Baina curriculum, but I kind of did that on my own mm -hmm. where I had a teacher one-on-one -on, -one on Skype. Mm -hmm. And you would just speak Arabic, classical Arabic mm -hmm. from beginning to end. Wow. So the first couple of classes, like, because uh, uh, he doesn't know English, you right. don't know Arabic. Right. So you got to somehow find it. And you, he didn't want you to speak English to him. Right. Even though our leader found out he can speak English. Right. I was like, <laughs> what are you doing? You know? But he's like, no, no, I want you to start picking up Arabic and just go from there. So I was like, okay. So, I mean, alhamdulillah, I went to Bayina. And subhanAllah, like, that 10 months changed completely for me. Wow. You know, it, it was like... You know, for a hafiz, it's also the point that, okay, there's a lot of places that the ayahs are very close. And they're uh -huh. mutashabihat. They're very, you know, tricky places. Uh -huh. And when you when I did this program, I was, subhanAllah, it actually opened your eyes. Like, okay, now you can know that this is supposed to be this way and this is this way. Mm -hmm. The example I give, for example, when some people think that, okay, you know, if I'm just changing the fatha or qasra dhamma, is the meaning, meaning changed completely? It's right. like, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. The example, in Surah Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi minash tawajim, wa yidhibita la ibrahima rabbuhu. Uh -huh. And remember when your Lord test uh, Ibrahim was tested by his Lord. Mm -hmm. Now it says Rabbuhu. Mm -hmm. Ibrahima Rabbuhu. Mm -hmm. If you were to say Ibrahimu Rabbahu, uh -huh. billah, you're saying that and remember when Ibrahim tested his Lord. Mm -hmm. That one Fatha Kasra Dhamma changes the meaning completely. Mm -hmm. So it's Ibtala Ibrahima Rabbuhu. So those kind of stuff made me change my mind. Like, it just like like what you say, think about it. It made me think about it. And alhamdulillah, till that day, like now. Now you really realize, okay, the Qur'an is like this. And to me, the Qur'an, I, I tell people it's like an ocean. You know, uh -huh. the, the treasures are not on the top. You right. have to dig deep in it. Right. So, you know, you can understand the translation, but it's like, okay, there's more to that. Right, right. And, you know, you were mentioning about earlier about, uh, for example, the Qur'an being revealed at once and everything like mm -hmm. that. That, again, is another moment. Mm -hmm. the, in, in Arabic, nazzala mm -hmm. means to send down. Mm -hmm. Nazzala means to send down over a period of time. Mm -hmm. Anzala means to send down at once. Mm -hmm. So, again, it came to the point. In, in Surah Ali Imran, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Nazzala al kitab uh, bil haq wa anzala al tawrat wal injil. Musaddiqa lima bayna wa anzala al tawrat wal injil. That Nazzala al kitab. He sent the Quran down over a period of time. Wa anzala al tawrat wal injil. And he sent down the Torah and Injil all at once. Mm. So even the Arabic says, so even, you know, for example, inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. Mm -hmm. When you say it was revealed on the laylatul it's using anzalna, mm -hmm. meaning the whole Quran was sent right. down. On, right. And then you say nazzala, it's saying it's sent down over a period of time. Man, see, that's that's why I bring guests like this on the show. They would just break it down. If he hasn't inspired you to dig deeper into the Quran and engage it, I don't know what will. I could talk to Burhan Shah Mah Mah uh, Mashhud all day, but we're going to take a break and come back. Don't go anywhere because it's going to be some more soon, inshallah. You are with Joshua Slam, and as we said, think about it. We'll be right back. Since August 25th of this year, over 600,000 individuals have fled from Myanmar into bordering Bangladesh. They've witnessed crimes against humanity. The United Nations calls what happened in Myanmar textbook definition of genocide, textbook definition of ethnic cleansing. We've been here for the last few months, providing them with access to clean drinking water, providing them with access to primary healthcare services, helping them build their shelters, as well as giving them weekly food distribution. We can't fathom what they've witnessed. The ones that have arrived into Bangladesh are the lucky ones. They're now residing in between the 22 to 25 official refugee camps that have now been established. With your continued support, we want to secure their future. We want to stay for the foreseeable future so that we can dig more water wells, so that we can provide them with more medication and more medical advice so that we can help build more shelters, especially with the winter coming and the cold setting in. 
please visit our website to find out more about our work and to support us with your generous donations. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say thank you very much for coming back and not running away. And, and you know, you're giving me more of your time. Who am I? I'm Joshua Salam, the host of Think About It. And as you knew, and you know, my host is Shah Mahshu, Ma, ah, Shah Mashhud. There you go. There or you go. AKA Burhan. <laughs> and uh, we have a, uh, the regular game that we're about to do. But what I would like him to do to, to start us out, as I told him I, I was going to ask him to recite a few verses for us. Uh, that, that he likes. And, and, and he said, you know, it gets harder to, to decide which verses you're going to do when you know the whole Quran. You're like, okay, where, where am I going to recite? But he had a little time to think about it. And if you want to take, uh, you know, a couple minutes and just okay. uh, sure. uh, open us up here. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ فَتَعَالَى اللَّهُ الْمَلِكُ الْحَقُّ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْكَرِيمِ وَمَنْ يَدْعُ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرَ لَا بُرْهَانَ لَهُ بِهِ فَإِنَّمَا حِسَابُهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِحُ الْكَافِرُونَ وَقُلْ رَبِّ اغْفِرْ وَارْحَمْ وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الرَّاحِمِينَ Subhanallah. Now, why, you know, before we get into the game, why, why those verses as opposed to so, anywhere else in the Quran? So, when you look at the translation, this is in Surah Mu'minun, and mm -hmm. you know, towards the end, it's talking about how, you know, people want to say that <clears throat> they ask Allah subhanahu wa give me a chance to go back to mm -hmm. this world, and Allah mm -hmm. subhanahu wa says, you know, kalla. And then He says that He's given us time, and it's just kind of a reflection. That's why mm -hmm. I kind of like mm -hmm. these ayat. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So. If, uh, if you don't remember anything else about this show today, in addition to all that he said about, uh, you know, engaging the Quran and, and his journey through it and starting at a young age and starting after high school, whatever it is, it's just use your time wisely here on, on, on earth and trying to do things that will make you love this deen, make you love Allah, make you love the prophets of Allah and try to be like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And because this is it, you get one chance, you get one crack at it. And, uh, and then that decides how we, how we go. So thank you very much. And, and uh, you know this, um, this game that I do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've seen that you've been on a losing streak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't worry, you'll win today. I don't know. It's, you know I'm, looking just, at these, um, I'm looking at these words and I'm like, you just okay. tapped into my competitive nature. You shouldn't have done that. Okay. Now I'm going to have to. It's okay. It's okay. I remember they, playing they gonna, basketball. They're going to be mad. <laughs> you know, you're the competitive nature. I had to bring it out in you, you know. And then you had that, you know. Oh, on my back, my back. So I had to like, you know, oh, being young, being no, young, I had to no. be like, okay, <laughs> let him do whatever he wants. But oh, do you do? You know what? After this show, it's go, it's on, it's <laughs> on. I'm gonna have to come out of retirement. All right, you ready? Yeah. Bismillah. Um, First. Hmm. Basketball. Sport. No worries, no worries. Kubida. What is a kubida? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, okay, no problem. Don't know what that is, but it sounds like something you eat. Uh, when you say it, I imagine some type of piece of meat. So I'm going to say uh, uh, kufta. Close. Really? Yeah. So what? What is a kubi? Oh, never mind. I, After I guess the word, okay. Then you can tell me what a kubi is. All right. My first clue was basketball. Yeah. Um, mentor. Basketball mentor. Yeah. 
Mm. Mm. You got it. It's right on the tip of the, tip of the beard. Jordan? Mm. No. But okay. Oh, but thank you. Now, nah, nah, I got, okay. I got, I got an idea. All right, let's see if this charcoal. Kebab. Yes. Yay. Kubida is a kebab. Kubida is yeah. a kebab. Is that another name for a kebab? Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. Cool. Kubida is like, it's a type of kebab. It's a type of So you're kebab. right, you're right. And then you're like, kufta. I was like, oh. Uh, okay. All right, all right. Well, you learn something new every day. All right, you ready? Yeah. Um, Belichick. Oh, uh. Brady? No. Belichick mentor. Uh, I'll get it next time. Okay. I'll get it next time. Fahrenheit. Celsius. No. Okay. All right. So I said basketball. I said mentor. I said Belichick. Let me say... Um, Um, I'm trying to think of a, uh, uh, man. Hmm. Mm. I need, I need, uh, my, my brain is going blank on what I want to say. All right, let's say, um, whistle. Whistle. Basketball, mentor, Belichick. Belichick has nothing to do with basketball. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you throw me off. It's like, okay. <laughs> Whistle. Mentor. So I'm guessing it's a person. Uh huh. Or, or yeah. That's okay. Guess it. We'll get it next time. I got you. Coach. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Could have said. Uh, did you start naming coaches? And I, would... I, I was trying to think of names, and I was like. Phil Jackson. But I can only say one word. Oh. So I could have said Phil Belichick. or Jackson. Okay. That's why I went Belichick. That was coach. the only coach I could think of. Gotcha. Okay. And that was then I was gonna say Ty, Ty Lu. Is that his name? Who, who's LeBron's coach? Uh, I don't care about LeBron. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah Ty Lu. LeBron is his own coach. Oh, oh yeah, LeBron. I should LeBron said. is yeah. Okay. All right. So, All right, uh, so, so I, you told got it. You, I told you. I told you Fahrenheit. Mm-hmm. Cold. Freezing. And I cold. Okay. Um, um, up. Down. No, but I, I like I like where you're going. So I said Fahrenheit, cold. Room. Okay. Fahrenheit, cold. Room temperature. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So, how many words is that for you? That's uh, two. Two. Okay. So it's you're winning two to one. Okay. All right. So my first clue was up. Uh huh. You said down. Down. My next clue is floors. Elevator. Yes. Yeah. Got it. Got it. We 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 a good team, man. You team up with you. All right. All right. Sorry for all the uh, you know. Construction. We're building up here Dean.tv <laughs> for you. Donate generously to us and pennyappeal.usa.org. Uh, okay. Right, here we go. My next clue. 24. This is a new word, right? Yeah. 24. Oh, it, can, it has to be one word. Or can it be? 24 is a number, so I'll go with that. Okay. Um, uh, day. Okay. No, that's not it's, it. It's not. Okay. It's not. So um, I think this is a repeat word, but no problem. So, you know, my producers are working on making sure we don't get any repeat gotcha. words. Okay. So I don't know if you've heard this in, a, in okay. another. Scarf. Hijab? Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't hear it, but it's. OK. Um, so I said 24. Uh huh. I said, now I'm going to say. Hey, man, you know, just do it. Whatever you're going to say, say it now. Now's the time to say it. If you're going to go, go. If you're going to come in, come in. You Minute. know what I'm saying? Minute. 24 minute hour. Yeah, yeah, 24 yeah. hours. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, so that's uh, three for you? Yeah. Three for me. Ty, this is a close game. 
See, we've, I don't know if it's been you giving the good clues or me just giving the answers. You, you, it's probably you. Probably you. I'll give it to you. It's okay. All right. Um, mud. Mud. Dirt. Pick. Okay, so I don't know if you're talking about like a hair pick or a pick and a pick and roll in basketball. But you just said pick, choose. No. Okay. Um, so you said mud. Yeah, I said mud. Uh, Adam. Mud. Adam. Clay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I was gonna say clay the first time, but I was like, okay, I don't know. All right. Okay. I only got one more word to go. Okay. So I said uh, the first time I said pick. Then I said my next word is gonna be basketball. Roll. Pick and roll? No, no. Okay. Um, um, Quran. Book? No. So I said basketball. I said uh, pick. Now, no, you said pick. Pick basketball. You said basketball, yeah, yeah. Window. Hmm. Pick. Window. Basketball. These are not. Uh, the pick and basketball I could see going together, but a window. Uh. The first clue was pick. That's normally the strongest clue. Pick, window, basketball. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, opportunity? No. Uh, window of opportunity, basketball. No. Okay. Here's Quran. Uh, Quran. Um, Burhan. Hafiz? Close. All right. I'll get you next time. Okay. So mine was pick, basketball, window. window. Uh, See, now you got to go through all the words that you know in, in your vocabulary. Is there a way you can choose a word that like rhymes with it? Uh, or no? Well, now that you've said it. No, uh, I'm saying, is it, can you? I, I'm not going to choose it. I mean, if you chose a word that rhymed with it without me knowing that you were rhyming to it, it wouldn't help. Like, if the word was uh, word yeah. and you said nerd, yeah. that wouldn't help me. right? Gotcha. Okay. Then if you're telling me, hey, I'm going to give you a word that rhymes <laughs> no, no, with it. No, no, I'm not going to now. So I was just saying if you could. So, so I said pick, basketball, basketball window. window. Projector. Hmm. Pick, basketball, window, projector. 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 <clears throat> uh, I thought you were going to get on the first word, but. Huh? You thought I was going to get it on yeah. the first word? Pick. Remote? No. Like pick a station? No. And then the second word kind of helped out the first word. Basketball. Yeah. Pick basketball. Okay. All right. Um, so that's four words, right? Yeah. Pick. Yeah, yeah. Basketball. Window. Projector. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so um, I said Burhan. I said Quran. Um, uh, uh, remember. Protector? Okay, we're, we're dancing around it. We're okay. dancing around it. Go ahead. So I said pick, basketball, window. How many clues can you give? Till I get it. Oh, wow. 
I'm running out of clues too. So, well, if pick was, if you thought I was going to get it on pick, give me another word that. And then I said basketball. He said basketball that you thought would help with the pick. Iso. Iso, like isolation. Uh, pick and roll, isolation, basketball. Iso, one on one, mano y mano. Uh, we're out of time. What was the word? Screen. Screen. Pick. Another word for pick is a screen. And then you said window Basketball. projector. Window screen. Ah, man. Well. What was my word? Uh, memorize. Oh. And I didn't want to say uh, I didn't want to say it in Arabic, but you were saying yeah, yeah. It in Arabic like hafiz. And what would you have said to to get you to say memorize? Memorize. I said Quran, I said Burhan, then I said remember. Uh, memorize. Yeah, see? Action? I, was, I, don't know. I, I was going through the same thing. Yeah. What was your last word? Protection. Protection. Yeah. I don't know what you would say for that. I, I was going to say probably like. <laughs> At, on a Muslim show, don't know what you would say for that. Anyway, thank you everybody for coming. We are going to um, uh, see you next next. Oh, tomorrow, what am I talking about? We'll see you tomorrow. I want to thank our guest, uh, uh, Shah Mah Mash Mashhood. Yeah. Shah Mashhood for coming on, Brother Burhan. And uh, hopefully you can be inspired by him and his journey to memorize the Quran and now being a Quran teacher. May Allah bless him and reward him and preserve the Quran through him and his yeah. students. And we will see you tomorrow on Think About It. Thank you to our sponsors, PennyAppealUSA.org. Do all you can for them as well to help the needy on this globe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This Dean TV video was made possible in part by Penny Appeal USA, small change, big difference, and by Recycle Processes Incorporated.